Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. My name is Jordan. I'm Millennial Investor and in today's episode we are going to be talking about a news article that I saw just today. I saw that there was a bill recently passed by the United States government and it's going to affect many quote tax avoiding corporations. One of those being Amazon. Now Amazon is my largest investment if you didn't know already. Right here on this pie chart Amazon currently makes up a massive part of my growth portfolio. About 59.5% as the last time I updated this about a week or so ago. So a huge chunk of my portfolio. And when I see headlines like this, Inflation Reduction Act to Impact Tax Evading Corporations, Will Nike and Amazon Fall? It's a scary headline, right? Get your attention. Grab your attention if you're an Amazon investor or a Nike investor. And so I want to talk in this video what I think about this, what I think about the Inflation Reduction Act, and if it should affect your investment for a company like Amazon. Because there's a lot of moving parts with a company like this with many different business segments. And I want to talk about what my plans are moving forward and if this Inflation Act will in fact reduce my confidence in Amazon and force me to sell out. But if you haven't checked me out before, my name is Jordan. I'm a millennial investor and I have 124 people signed up with them on finance so far. So go ahead and check that out down below in the description if you haven't already, as well as my growth portfolio, which has dividend growth portfolio stocks for a defensive investment strategy or a basket of growth portfolio stocks like Amazon and Salesforce, which is a very offensive concentrated strategy. Or if you want to reach out to me personally to reach out about a possible mentoring call or anything like that, that is down below in the description, as well as credit card referrals, Yada savings accounts, all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and jump straight into this video. Thank you for tuning in, and I'd invite you to subscribe and like the video by the end of this if you find value in it. And let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, Amazon is a huge chunk of my portfolio. And let's go ahead and start by reading the first little paragraph or two of this article. It says, after much delay, the U.S. Senate recently passed the $430 billion climate, healthcare, and tax bill called the Inflation Reduction Act. If signed into law, which it has been since then, the Inflation Reduction Act aims to fight climate change and lower healthcare costs. The significant investments under the bill will be partly funded by a 15 minimum corporate tax imposed on large corporations with an average book income exceeding $1 billion over a three-year period. The minimum tax provision is expected to impact companies like Nike, Amazon, FedEx, and several other companies that have often been criticized for paying low or no federal income taxes by using many deductions and exemptions. And let's go ahead and fast forward here, and I want to jump forward to this. It says, meanwhile, in February 2022 report, ITEP disclosed that if e-commerce giant Amazon had paid the statutory rate of 21% of its 2021 U.S. income without any tax breaks, then its taxes would have been over $7.3 billion. However, Amazon paid $2.1 billion in federal income taxes. ITEP noted that the company's overall federal tax rate was just 5.1% on more than $78 billion of U.S. income reported over the past four years. Now, this is a, something that I typically see with companies like this. You typically see scary headlines that say something that's really eye-catching. Inflation Reduction Act to impact tax evading corporations. Will Nike and Amazon fall? And it's really easy to get scared out of good companies. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to read this article that is not even investing related. It has nothing to do with Amazon, has nothing to do with Nike, or really even stocks or investing in general. I wanted to talk about how the media will affect the way that you look at things. The way that you have opinions built upon your beliefs or your investments can easily be swayed by reading a scary headline like this and many others like it. This person who is writing it talks about being in the field for over a decade and studying the emotions of journalism, says that, quote, while fear is an emotion that we frequently experience as individuals, it can also be a shared and social emotion, one which circulates through groups and communities and shapes our reactions to ongoing events. Like other emotions, fear is contagious and can spread swiftly. Media coverage sets the agenda for public debate. While the news doesn't necessarily tell us what to think, it tells us what to think about. In doing so, the news signals which issues merit our attention. Research has consistently shown that when issues receive extensive media coverage and are prominent in the news agenda, they also come to be seen as more important by members of the public. And that leads me back to Amazon. The stock has been crushed a lot over the last year. Ever since their recent uh, report, their quarterly report, the stock has started to recover. But if you look even with the recovery year to date, the company is still negative 14.88%. On a year-over-year -year basis, it's still down about 30 
13%. And it's finally started to recover now, but that doesn't speak to what's been happening over the last year. And I think a lot of people are concerned about many of the scary headlines with Amazon, and this just adds on to it. This is just one more thing for investors to be worried about investing in Amazon, my largest investment. But this leads me to where I think that investors could be getting this wrong. If you're getting scared by headlines like this, if you're worried about Amazon's growth, Amazon's ability to pay taxes, okay, well, it says in this article, it said that Amazon's tax bill would have been $7.3 billion. Okay, let's go ahead and look at their cash pile. Let's pretend that Amazon was forced to pay this right now. We're on Qualtrum Insights, and we're looking at their quarterly balances. As of the most recent quarter, this company had a cash balance. Let's zoom in here. Their most recent cash balance was $60.7 billion. But wait a minute, let's go back here. It said their tax bill would be $7 billion. Their most recent cash balance is $60 billion. About 10% of their cash. 10%. This company is still buying out other companies. If you haven't been familiar, if you haven't been paying attention, this company just recently made out deals to buy out One Medical, a multi-billion dollar company, about $3 billion, which they're going to inherit all of that revenue. Okay, what about another one? They also, a short like three or four weeks later, also made a deal to buy out for about a billion and a half dollars to buy out our robot, a company that's doing well over a billion dollars plus in revenue. And that is something that is not concerning to me because when you figure out the fact that they could pay these type of taxes very easy and the fact that they're still growing is not a concern. If you hop over here and we look at my little notes for Amazon, these little charts that I keep up with, this is my little thing that I keep up with, a little spreadsheet that I update quarter after quarter for Amazon that I just started. And if you look, the quarter over quarter revenue growth, most recently right here, what I'm highlighting with my mouse, so far in the first quarter of 2022, they grew 7%. The second quarter, they grew an additional 7%. So Amazon's been growing 7% so far in 2022, when by the way, in case you didn't notice, we're in a recession. The company's still growing 7%. But what about moving forward, okay? Well, analysts project that net quarter, we're going to produce about 15% growth. Uh, year over year, throughout this year, we're supposed to do about 11% growth. Now, what's the reason for that? Net sales are expected to be between 125 and $130 billion compared to last year, which represents 13 to 17% growth, which is right in line with what analysts have at about 15% growth. Now, the reason is that is that Amazon has been able to change its prime day from the second quarter to the third quarter. Their 2021 Amazon Prime Day was on June of last year, which is obviously in the second quarter of the year. Now, if you go to this year's 2022 date, it was in the third quarter of the year. So the fact that if you go back to this and realize that Amazon grew its second quarter sales that it just produced at plus 7% growth, and the company didn't even have Prime Day. That would be something that takes its revenue down significantly. The fact that they're growing almost double digits without Prime Day is fantastic. Now, if you realize that they're going to do Prime Day now in the third quarter, that doesn't factor in Prime Day in the third quarter of last year, so it's going to be comparing to this line right here at $110 billion. You realize that Amazon's going to be growing very, very likely well into the double digits this coming quarter. Now, what's even more surprising is that if you look year over year, it's 11%, okay? So Amazon, despite all this growth, its revenue last year, let's go to its revenue of last year, came in at a whopping $469 billion, one of the largest revenue companies on the planet. I believe uh, other than Walmart, it is the largest revenue company on the planet. $470 billion in revenue, and this company's still growing almost in the double digits. Furthermore, profitability. While it has started to struggle in 2022, obviously being in a reception, the main, the main profitability driver of this company and the big reason why I invested in it, AWS, is producing margins of well over 30% throughout the year. So far through 2022, it has a margin average of about 32%, 32.15 to be exact. So it's producing 30% margins, which is about $6 billion a quarter in pure profit. And the fact that this company's still growing double digits should not concern you. So when you read articles like this, when you read Inflation Reduction Act to, to impact tax evading corporations like Nike and Amazon, when I, when I read that Amazon might have to start paying more taxes, is that a good thing for an investor? No, of course not. We don't want that to happen. But at the end of the day, as long as it's able to continue to grow its company, grow its moat, 
have a competitive edge over its competitors, it will continue to dominate both the e-commerce and infrastructure market for companies that are needing internet and other similar services. This company is a powerhouse, and whether or not they have to pay a little more in taxes is ridiculous. The fact that they were able to produce $33 billion in net income, and they're looking at growing that over the next five years, whether or not they have a little extra tax bill or not is pretty much irrelevant to me. So don't get scared out of great companies, keep level-headed when you're investing, and just keep focusing on the future advantages of these companies, these massive compounding growers like Amazon and how great they're going to be for your investment portfolio. That's why it's one of the largest investments in my portfolio. It is the largest investment in my portfolio and it likely will continue to be for a long, long time. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Get signed up with the one finance down below if you haven't already, as well as lots of other things, including yacht savings accounts, credit card referrals, and potential mentoring session opportunities with me. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.